and I'll let her introduce herself to you all. Thanks very much. Over to you, Fanula. Ace, thank you very much, Jane. So yes, hello everyone, I'm Fanula. I don't mind if you mispronounce my name, but I know some people like to get it right, so I'll say it again, Fanula. I'm a lecturer at Robert Gordon University in Aberdeen, and I specialize in industrial data management. Now that term, industrial data management, I made it up for myself. About 18 months ago, maybe two years ago, I decided that my existing identity, professional identity, I wanted to change it, but I didn't necessarily want to change it in the direction that might be assumed or even sometimes identities might be being pushed on me. And I decided, wait a minute, I reminded myself, I am the master of my own career path. I am the author of my identity and I can do this. So I've styled myself as industrial data management. And really the overall purpose of this session is to remind you that you can do the same. You are not defined by anybody else. You as a, as a person and as a professional can be whoever you are. And we don't actually have many platforms where we can have this type of discussion. So the most important thing here is that by having this event, we are endorsing the legitimacy of that discussion. You have the right to pursue not just job satisfaction, but career satisfaction and feel like what you do is worth doing. Um, so the most important thing is that we're talking about it at all. I have planned three sections for us. We're going to first off have a little bit of audience participation where we're going to share some of the terms that come to mind in uh, considering our own professional identities. Then we'll talk about some of the challenges as I see them that we've had thus far in trying to develop identity and then move on to what does the literature say are, are general inputs to developing identity and so what can that mean for actions for us. So to get some ideas started, I am going to paste a link into the chat to a form for uh, a word cloud. So that's, um, that link should work now. You should be able to click the link. It will give you a form with three term, three boxes, and you can just start throwing in any terms that are coming to mind when you think of your professional identity. Don't worry about anyone else's, think about yours. Um, if I move over to see if anyone has started putting any words in. Just start throwing them in now if you can see them and if, if you can't see them, yes, people are starting to submit. Um, for the first few minutes, I'm going to keep it hidden so you're not influenced by terms other people have put in, but then I'll show you what the, the developing uh, word cloud looks like. So please do start throwing them in. A couple of points I'd like you to, to be aware of when you're doing this. First off, if you're looking at that form thinking, I don't know, that's why I'm in this session. Please say, I don't know, because in these things, perhaps more than others, it's really important for some of us to be saying, I don't know, just as loudly as others are saying, I do know, because otherwise there's the risk of falling back into that position of your identity being dictated by someone else. You have the right to, to have a different identity. The other point I would like you to, to consider is to try, and this is going to be difficult and feel a bit weird, try to step away from tasks and job titles. That doesn't define you. The things that, that make you feel valuable and make you at the end of the day reflect that that day's work was worth doing, those things are much more about what motivates you. What value do you think you've created in the day? What um, what makes you feel like you've grown as a professional? What makes you feel capable? What makes it, what, what justifies your existence and, and justifies your contribution to society, makes you feel like you're, a, you're, you're creating value? And that can be quite a difficult position to put yourself in mentally because it's never on your to-do list for the day is to create value for society. It's always um, much more applied. So some examples that you might think of you might be involved in the diversity and inclusion initiative in your organization because you feel strongly that uh, that there should be equal opportunity. Because you feel strongly about it, that is part of your professional identity. So you should be putting it in this form, um, equal opportunity. For me, one of my identities is I, f I get great satisfaction from thinking that my work contributes in its way to the continuation of critical national infrastructure. 
which is particularly important at a time like this. Other examples might be you might really, really enjoy mentoring and line management because you get a lot of value out of seeing other people develop and feeling like you've helped them do so. You might be maybe you're working in the um, faster moving data science end of our field where you have to do continuous learning, otherwise your skill set becomes obsolete. You might get a lot of satisfaction from the continuous learning thing that might in itself feel like um, something worth doing. So none of these things are on your to do list. You don't put be a mentor on your to do list, but it is how you feel like you might create value. But one of the ways that you feel like you might create value. So let's have a look at what our uh, our Word cloud looks like. I'm going to stop sharing the slide and see if I can share our cloud. You should be able to see the Word cloud now. Has it appeared? Yeah, you're all muted. So yeah. You don't... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. I can see it. So 31 people have contributed terms into the Word Cloud. I'm going to leave it on screen for a while. So if you want to add other things, um, that's fine. Uh, and if you want to emphasize something, if you something there that you want to make bigger, please do reiterate that term. So moving on to the, the second part of the, uh, the session, I want to talk a bit about what might have been influencing our, um, our ideas here and why that matters. I said at the beginning that I don't think we have many spaces to have these types of conversations. And I think that has a couple of important consequences for us. This is all my opinion from reflection and reading up on literature. Um, you're free to disagree with me. And again, as I said, it's more important that we just have a space to have the conversation uh, more so than any one thing that's said. Most of the platforms that we do have available to us, and we do have platforms available, but most of them have an underlying assumption that the outcomes we're pursuing are business industry legitimate outcomes to pursue. Don't get me wrong, we should be doing that. But if there's a um, a a kind of implication over time that these are the things that matter, then by exclusion, it it kind of discourages discourages us from having conversations where we're looking at personal outcomes and we have the right to pursue personal outcomes. They're not incompatible with industry outcomes. We want these things to, um, to, to marry up and, and they can, but it feels almost discouraging from having these conversations. If the, the implication is we should only care about business and industry things, we're all human. It's natural to want to feel that we're growing, that we're, that we're doing a job that's worth doing to get satisfaction from what we're doing couple of consequences from that completely unintentional um, underlying assumption is that in the absence of conversations like this one, we adopt as our professional identity the identity coming from those conversations about industry and, um, and business. So with, there's less differentiation between what might be professional identity and industry identity. That means that we don't have the higher level negotiated and agreed group professional identity that, for example, engineers or doctors or accountants have. We don't have that negotiated. Here's our code of ethics. Here's our value statement. Here's the, the behavior that we will hold each other to because it's in the interests of wider society. We serve industry. Um, an example of what might happen when when you have that um, deprioritized professional identity, it was definitely a contributing factor in Fukushima. The nuclear engineers, we would want them to live by their, their code of conduct of um, inherently safer design, proper HAZOP analysis, um, reducing risk to as low as reasonably practical. But actually, in that situation, they were playing, they were secondary to industry and government agendas. So nobody set out to create a, a situation where you'd lose nuclear containment, but that's what happened. One of the contributing factors was this deprioritized professional identity. The second unintended consequence I think we have of, um, of the focus being on business and industry outcomes 
is that when we do talk about the the who of whatever we're calling it, petroleum data management or um, industrial data management, it tends to be from the management perspective. So it tends to be, how do I upskill my staff? How do I recruit the right people? How do I do this with this, the, the human resource? How do I achieve things with the human resource? Which is quite one directional. And certainly as a member of that resource pool, I feel a bit disenfranchised sometimes. It's almost like we're treated like um, software that's going out of support and needs a, an update. And again, it's perfectly reasonable for the management perspective to be like that because they are managing a workforce, but there's still something missing if we as individuals are not part of that conversation in shaping our own identity. It feels like we're, we're not being allowed to be human. Humans have the right to pursue professional identity. That negotiated and shared professional identity is what we will ultimately use to articulate our value to society in the way that nuclear engineers or anyone else might be doing it. So if we don't have that component, we're missing a key signal that we are a profession at all. And we are relegating ourselves to a, a, an occupation that will fulfill a job description, but otherwise has no particular pride or awareness of value creation, or even willingness to blow the whistle if things aren't in line with the codes of conduct. Um, so I said that I wanted an opportunity for you to contribute anonymously as well. So you can put things in the chat if you like, but also I am going to post another link. This is a um, this is an anonymous questions and comments that you can put in here as you continue, because I, as I was thinking about this over the last week, Sometimes the things we have to say about identity don't necessarily reflect brilliantly on us or don't we don't want to put that forward. We don't want to admit it publicly under our own name or maybe they're tied up with our um, our career paths and we don't want to associate with our, our employer any negative comments. So if you have other things to say, you can put them in the other form and we'll, we will share them. So I said I wanted to talk about other inputs to identity and, and how that might translate to actions for us. The, the literature on professional identity gets very dense very quickly, much like a lot of stuff coming out of academia. So I took out some things which made sense to me and I'm trying to interpret them so that they make sense to us as a group, but it's not complete. Uh, it's kind of an ongoing reflection for all of us, myself included, as to what I want to take from, from the literature and what I think is not uh doesn't resonate and um, the things uh, beyond the the kind of negotiated shared professional identity and the code of conduct or behavior whatever that we don't yet have other things that will input to identity development for us as individuals personally professionally and as a group are particularly social interactions in the broadest sense so not just dinner parties but any any interaction with another person how you assimilate into the workplace and the experiences you have in, in attempting to do that in a new job and whatever you're bringing to your identity from your background. Social interaction is a big input to identity because identity is not developed in isolation. There's a feedback loop to how we want to be perceived, how we realize we are being perceived and how we change that and, and try and influence how we want to be perceived. And I work on the general assumption that we want, be, we want to be perceived as having value that the work we're doing is worth doing and that it takes intellectual ability and intellectual development. Um, the social element is particularly complicated now in the oil industry because the industry itself is trying to change its identity to become the broader energy industry, certainly in Europe. And it's also trying to engage in the fourth industrial revolution and, and keep pace with that. But that's what the industry is doing. That's not necessarily bringing us with it as individuals. So how we feel about that might be more complicated. And if you are aware of a discomfort or, or a, a disconnection, you can go back to, for example, something like the word cloud and think, well, what's the mismatch here? And that's what I had back when I was thinking, I'm, I'm not sure who I am um, relative to my current identity, but I also don't really identify with the things that people are pushing on me. So it's that kind of mismatch. And it's not a rejection of, for example, the new energy industry. It is more of um, a, a recognition that it doesn't define me, that the, the broader industry doesn't define me. Particularly for me, for example, 
oil and gas was on my word cloud and critical national infrastructure is on my word cloud. But energy particularly isn't there as a specific intervening layer any more so than pharmaceutical or food and drink or transport, all being critical national infrastructure. So to, to change my identity from oil and gas to energy would be to follow the, the trend of the industry, but not necessarily in line with my own identity. So the action here for us all is to participate in these ongoing conversations can be casual, it doesn't have to be um, in pursuit of any immediate outcome, but uh, to participate in this conversation so you can bring to light these opportunities that you're interested in pursuing, but equally opportunities that maybe somebody else can pursue. The, the second of the three inputs I particularly took from the lit literature is workplace assimilation. So when you apply for a new job, you do so based on the application or the, the advert, but once you're in the job, you learn what actually matters and what, what community exists there, what's important to that community and how you, you can signify your membership of that community or how you realize that you're not fitting in. So for example, for me, academia is not part of my professional identity. Teaching, educating is, but being an academic is not. And I had a horrible time in this assimilation period because I was failing to do it. Uh, ultimately, I, I, on reflecting about identity and values, I worked out what the disconnection was and that I could be confident that it was just a thing that is, not a thing that is a problem, and I could just leave it be. But I needed a lot of help to do that. I needed a career coach to, to help me work out what the mismatch was. And it, it also helped that I was doing a academic practice qualification which you have to do for higher education teaching so I needed help from specific people who were willing to to let me rant it that was to, to what was going wrong and help me explore my identity for that so the action for this one I would say is find your mentor they don't even have to know that you're there your mentor um try and, and find these individual people that you can have deeper conversations with to explore identity because we're not all entirely conscious of identity at any one time and it takes reflection over time to, to develop awareness. I note with interest that the Oil and Gas Authority in the UK published their diversity and inclusion report last week and it includes an action that now all OGA staff have access to a career coach. So these kind of conversations that would previously have been relegated to your annual appraisal, where there's the box where you say what your career aspirations, they should be coming forward quite a bit more. But yeah, the action is, is find your find your coach, find your unit, maybe even you know, form a, a kind of a development group with a couple of people you get on with so you can have these types of discussions. The final input to identity, which I think is possibly a bigger one in our area, is background. So that's what experiences, whether they be education or, uh, um, or workplace or whatever, what experiences you're bringing forward into your identity now. And it's natural that we are bringing things forward because we're all products of our experiences thus far. But because our other inputs are maybe in flux in the wider industry or undeveloped or less developed, we, uh, we rely on what we know. So that might be business analysis, geoscience, engineering, IT, service provision. We bring forward those elements into our identity and we should, but we should also be questioning them and questioning where they might be, be becoming assumptions. Um, for example, let's say, let's say you are a seismic data manager and you have been made redundant. You're looking for a new job. Last week, I saw a job advert called Biodiversity Information Manager. Would you necessarily, if you identify as a seismic data manager, even consider this job? It's not clear what industry it's from. It's biodiversity information. It's not, it's not data focused. It's, um, it's information focused uh, and it's biology rather than geoscience. But if you click through to the actual job advert, it's a GIS job which makes sense when you think that biodiversity is probably varied by location and it happens to be in the pharmaceutical sector. So if you, um, if you take the opportunity to reflect on your identity and realize it's not tied up in seismic data, but it's more location-based data, any geo-reference data, then suddenly this job is in your professional identity. It wouldn't be that big of a leap. 
But if you had just worked on the assumption that you are a seismic data person, then you might not have even considered this opportunity. So the action is to question the assumptions that you're bringing forward from your background because they might not actually be as, as solid as you're assuming. So I hope the next step for you is to continue to participate in this conversation. I'm going to leave the word cloud open so you can keep throwing things in there. Um, and we will look at the questions that have been submitted thus far. Uh, but I'm going to leave that open as well, both maybe for the next hour. So if you've got other ideas that you want to put in, that's great. Um, but I would also invite you to uh, join us and continue the conversation in the SPDM Slack site. I'm just pasting a link in to join that uh, into the chat. As I said, this is a long term conversation. So as well as continuing the conversation from today for however long it continues, I have made a personal note for myself that in six months time, I'm gonna come back to Slack, to any other platforms, maybe back as another webinar and invite you to think, what advances have I made in my professional identity if it's just realizing what it is or changing it or uh, taking action to achieve a different one because it, this is a longitudinal thing. So as I said at the top, the, the value here is that we've created a space to have this conversation at all. It actually doesn't even matter so much what I've said. It's just that it's prompts for you thinking. So that's everything I wanted to say. We can move over to the questions now. Um, yeah, the first, um, yeah, thanks very much, Vanula. Um, I hope you didn't mind. I was in the chat thing putting the um, links to the Oil and Gas Authority um, Diversity and Inclusion Report, and I also put the job advert up for <laughs> the Biodiversity Information and Systems Manager, because like you say, you never know, and, you, and if you look at the actual requirements, um, I bet a lot of our data managers can actually fit that. You're absolutely right there. Well done. Um, I think we've got one question on the meeting chat from Alex. He said, what are your thoughts on how PPDM Certified Petroleum Data Analyst provides a professional identity? Have you got any thoughts on that? Yeah, anything that that is coming from a, a membership body contributes to identity because it's saying that I'm part of this club, whether it's certification or just membership or attendance at, the, at an event, it signifies membership of something. Um, so I mean I, I can't speak to particular certifications, but what it, it what it, what it means to your identity is whatever it means to your identity. If it's important to you and meaningful to you that you are a part of this this community, then that's legitimate. But equally to someone else, if it's no big deal either way, then that's legitimate for them. I, I think we have to we have to remind ourselves that identity is personal and it doesn't necessarily have to follow from broader industrial things. So. Any any kind of um, effort towards membership of a community, I think, is good, and that would include PPDM certification. So, has anybody got any other questions that they'd like to put to Fanula? Um, the floor is open. Well, there's a bunch of comments in the mentee. Can you see yes, them? Yes, perhaps. The yes. Mentee? Yeah. I think everybody can say that. So, is there yeah. anything that particularly shouts out to you at the moment that you could sort of start answering? Hi, Fenella. This is Zubai. Hey, Zubai. How are you doing? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Uh, hi, I'm Zubai from Repsol. Um, I would like to ask, uh, just now you said that this will be the um, a long conversation. It's ongoing thing. So may I know, do we capture, like, do we um, a minute this conversation and all the action items? How, how do we... Uh, how do we capture this and how are we going to work on that? Do we have a platform that we can monitor our progress of our conversation? Thank yeah, you. so this event has been recorded and we I invite you to continue the conversation on Slack, which is a collaboration platform and it's free and there's a link in the chat box. So at the moment, it's not very structured, but we can do things such as, for example, there can be a, a particular channel in Slack where people meet monthly and just chat about their professional identity. You can put some some structure to it like that. But for now, having the platform alone, I think, is is a significant endorsement of the legitimacy of this conversation. Thank you. Is that, is that OK? Yeah. So. so perhaps maybe we could get answering some of the questions in here. Yeah. I mean, one of the really quite 
what skills are in demand at the moment? Have, have you seen what skills are in demand, Finula? There's a there's a one of those questions. That's quite interesting. Um, I mean, you know, I would kind of put that back to. You don't necessarily have to develop a skill because it's in demand if it's not something that you're interested in developing. For example, I don't want to be a line manager. I just it just doesn't, doesn't look fun. Um, it, so even if line management skills were in demand, I wouldn't necessarily want to go that way because it's not part of my identity. So it, um, I would I would want somebody to have a, an, a level of awareness of their identity, irrespective of, of skills demand, because that helps you differentiate the opportunities that you would genuinely, genuinely enjoy and genuinely feel like you're creating value in versus um, simply, simply fulfilling a need for someone else. I'm aware that's a, that's unhelpful for, in terms of what is the answer to the question of what skills are in demand. So I think that that does come out of the the conversations of of management saying how do I upskill people? How do I get the right people? I think that maybe what's what's motivating this is about the you know the the, the movement from data management to data science. I have opinions on that. I'm not going to start ranting about it. Um, I think a, a baseline level of skills and data science is going to become part of the expected you know, graduate skill set or just just a person who thinks they are employable skill set. So some some basic programming analytics stuff will be there, but skills are still um, data quality, data lifecycle management, service provision, governance. Um, working with engineers, working with users, understanding technical things. I think that's still all valid. That's my perspective, but I, I'm, you know, my perspective is different as an educator versus as a line manager and someone who's trying to, to resource. So I think this conversation, that, that question should be asked more broadly as well. Mm -hmm. Has anybody got any thoughts on that? I think yeah. um, the, the the other comments talking about figuring out a brand and not being valued as a professional mm. and the the lack of of um, valuing of it of it's a theme. It's always a theme. Yes, it is. Yes. But what I said is um, in the session being being that we don't have that top level statement of why we are needed, what value we are creating for society. That would be a strong element of brand and, and the things that we've spoken about like um equality of opportunity safety is definitely part of my professional identity any one of them on its own is fairly generic it's the combination of things coming together that perform our unique um, professional identity as a community so that's why it does take reflection and it can it can seem a bit too theoretical and and high level and removed from day-to-day -day tasks but that's actually how we articulate value and why a uh, uh, necessity i think no that that's uh quite an insightful answer actually and quite true um another comment is should we consider professional identities why should i label myself as only one thing yeah you don't have to label yourself as, as only one thing there are, there's definitely plurality is the word that the academic literature uses in identities. You can be a bunch of different things. Um, you know, I still consider myself to be part of the practitioner group of industrial data managers, except I don't practice because I teach. Mm -hmm. Those are two different identities, which I don't have to hold simultaneously, but I do just because that's what feels authentic to me. So you can be multiple things, definitely. You don't have to, to have a single professional identity. Has anybody got any thoughts on that? I think we're at time anyway, so. OK, that was good. But um, so what I want to say now is then thank you so much for taking your time out of your day to um, listen to Fanula and it was actually quite insightful um, and I actually really enjoyed it. Um, so thanks very much, Fanula. Um, I just also want to say we will be um, holding another webinar I believe it's the 2nd of June, but we can just if you just check the SPDM website and um, and it'll be more information. I believe it could be myself doing the talk um, about data management um, 
as a remote service in the COVID-19 world or basically the day in the life of them, um, how we get, we manage our um, the company you work for and all the data that they need. So um, maybe quite, we might be quite an interesting talk. That's if we get connected, okay? Um, so I just want to say thanks again for everybody and um, we look forward to you joining us again on the 2nd of June. If we're